Welcome to MS Research Australia's Research Report. I'm Dr Hamish Campbell and in this series we explore the research that's going on in Australia and around the world. In this episode we meet Dr Scott Colby. Dr Colby is investigating ways to track and predict how someone's MS may regress. He's using MRIs and other novel measures to do this. This is what he had to say. My uh, research is actually looking at people with MS and how their disease progresses over time. So a lot of the research I do is focused on making new ways of tracking the disease and that might be through um, looking at parts of their brain with an MRI scanner or also we look at how their walking and balance changes over time using um, tracking, uh, video tracking and balance boards. We also look at uh, other aspects of their disease like cognition and uh, we can do that using cognitive testing but recently we've also been looking at how you can test cognition by tracking people's eyes while they're doing different things. And then we also try to put all of that together to look at whether with all of that information we can do a better job of tracking and predicting what's going to happen uh, to a person with MS over the course of their disease. So I th MS is a very heterogeneous disease, so every patient experiences a different disease course and some people respond better to different treatments than others. And there are lots of different factors that influence what is going to happen to a person over their life with who, who has MS. What we want to do is to remove that variability or at least to be able to understand that variability. So we might be able to identify the people who are at greatest risk uh, and, and they might be able to be supported better than those who we think are probably going to have uh, a reasonably uh, MS that is not as disabling as, as other people. So the ultimate goal of my research is to be able to accurately predict what's going to happen to someone in many years to come, not just next year, but in, say, 10 years' time. So when I first started working in MS research, we were just starting to look at new ways of using MRI scanners. And that was about 15 years ago. So the technology had just gone from looking at uh, the sort of standard scans that uh, people have when they go to the, the hospital and they have a clinical MRI scan where it will show where the lesions on the brain are to moving into, well, we know that there's a lesion there, but what's actually happening in the brain? It's not just that there's a white spot, because if you actually were to open that person's brain up, heaven forbid, and look at that, it's not just a white spot in their head. There's actually a lot of different cells there and lots of different types of damage that are occurring. So is there a way that we can use an MRI scanner, which is a really good way of looking inside someone's body without having to do any kind of invasive procedures, uh, to be able to get more information about what's happening at the cellular level. The type of technology that we work with mainly looks at how water molecules diffuse through the tissue, which sounds a little bit uh, abstracted from what's going on, but what we can do is if you pour uh, some colourful dye into a glass of water, it sort of slowly diffuses through the glass of water. Uh, if you had lots of barriers within that glass of water, then it would naturally be stopped by those barriers and go along the barriers. Now, inside the brain, there are many connections between different parts of the brain, and those are the axons, which are myelinated, and it's the myelin breakdown which causes a lot of the disability in people with MS. Now, those barriers that go in sort of these pathways, which are like the, I guess, the... Uh, the information superhighway of the brain, uh, we, if we use diffusion imaging, what we can see is the breakdown of those membranes. We can also start to see processes of myelin degeneration and then even potentially myelin regeneration. And so that technology was just coming into its infancy when I started working in MS research about 15 years ago. Now we're at the point where we can really specifically see these processes and we can do it in um, a general scan time that you would uh, have for a standard clinical scan around two, three minutes. And from that, we can go and infer what's actually happening in the tissue. 
So currently, my research is about trying to figure out how sensitive and specific those uh, these new technologies are. So we're trying to track people over time to look at, so if we track someone for a year, does that give us information about what's going to happen in five or 10 years? So that requires a bit of time because we need to track those people and then let some time elapse to actually see what happens to their disease if they become more or, or more disabled or not, if they lose uh, brain volume, if their brain shrinks or not. So at the moment, we're just starting to look at some data that we collected uh, about seven years ago and we're, we're starting to compare that to what's happened in the intervening period and we're probably within the next few months we'll have a good idea of whether or not this method's actually able to predict longer term disease uh, progression. So the research that I was just talking to you about has obviously evolved over many years and there's been a number of people involved in that. Uh, and MS Research Australia has actually contributed to that research by funding me as a PhD student many years ago and, uh, and during the early stages of my postdoctoral training. And then more, most recently, uh, I think ending last year, MS Research Australia funded uh, a postgraduate scholarship for a PhD student who was working with me, Sanuji Gajamungi. And she was pretty instrumental in, in developing these techniques that I've just been talking about uh, and, and recently showed that uh, in people who have damage to their visual system, we can actually quite specifically track that uh, with, with this diffusion MRI technology that I've been talking about. So uh, that's been a good proof of proof of principle for the research because we knew that these people had a visual disturbance. They had a, a, a symptom called optic neuritis where they have damage to their optic nerve and that causes some temporary to even long-term visual disturbance. So we knew where the damage was. So that allowed us to say, well, if we look at these scans, do we see the damage where we expect it to be? And sure enough, the, the, the participants in that study, all of those people who'd had uh, optic neuritis had very specific damage to their visual system. So it was a good proof of principle that, we're, that, that our technique that we're looking at is very specific to what we're looking for. The, the vision I have for what I'm doing, I guess, is that we currently use fairly old technology for assessing people with MS using MRI. Uh, so the, the, the types of scans that people with MS get as part of their clinical service delivery, they're the same scans that they've been getting since the mid-90s. Uh, and the, the problem with bringing in new types of technology is that it often involves a lot of things that have to happen after the scan's collected. The, the scans need to be analysed using some kind of software and then that needs to feed back to the clinician. And that's quite... Uh, you know, it's difficult and, and not easy within the clinical environment. My vision, and I'm working very closely with radiology departments, is to, now that we have, uh, all of that's a lot easier because of, of computing technology has just accelerated so much that we can do a lot of that in real time now. So we can actually com provide processed data. So we, we collect the MRI data and then we process it in some way and present back a processed image back on the system to the, the radiologist. They can look at that and we can also give them quantitative information, so numbers that they can use to compare to previous time points. And then they can use that in their reporting and, and feedback to the treating neurologist, give them more specific information about the, the the change over time and also where in the brain the damage is occurring. So we're not just saying, you know, all brains are equal damage, who cares where it is? Because we know that if certain parts of the brain are damaged, then that confers a greater risk for cognitive impairment or motor impairment. So uh, that's, that's my vision is that we're going to be able to integrate this kind of technology much better into standard clinical practice. Now that's a brief snapshot of Dr. Colby's work. Go to our website for more information and make sure you like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future research reports. I'm Dr. Hamish Campbell and I'll see you next time.